my class. Alright, let's get our public members. First thing we need to do is make the constructor and destructor. They're not going to do anything. Okay, the next thing we need to do is to be able to set our integer. It's not going to return anything. Okay, so let's do like this. Um, the function, we're going to call it set int. Alright. It takes an argument of type int. And because we're using all dynamic memory, it's going to be a pointer. Let's move this down a bit so uh, you can more clearly see. It's going to be a pointer. And we'll call it int a. Just because. Alright. Um, it's going to be a const. Because it's not where... No, it's not going to be const, sorry. The next one's going to be const. Um, now that we have this, uh, uh, take a look at it. It has to be a pointer because um, we're not going to actually have any variable names because it's all going to be dynamic and we're going to be working fully with pointers using the keyword new. Alright, so now let's create the body. Normally you would do this outside of the class, but um, like I said, this is an advanced topic and these are little things you should know. I'm trying to get on to the actual education side of what we're doing. Um, we haven't declared the variable name, but we'll call it my int. I'll keep it simple, my int. And it, we're going to assign the value from the pointer inta, which was just passed to the function, just like that. Alright? Simple as like that. Now we need a way to get that number. Integer get int. We want to get it out of there. It's going to be a const, meaning this function is not going to be allowed to change anything. This is just for cleanliness of code and for safety. C++ is all about protecting its member variables and things like that. Um, so keep that in mind. We can actually just omit that for clarity, keep the coder smaller, but remember you should probably put const in there. Helps protect things a little bit. Uh, we want to return the value of my int. Just like that. Okay. Now our private member will be the variable my int. Simple as that. And let's end the class on that note. Okay, once that's done, let's start working with the body, the main function. Alright, the first thing we need to do is create my class. Okay, now, remember we're using dynamic memory, so it's actually not going to be a variable name. It's going to be a pointer, which could go here, here, or in front of the name. and We'll, we'll call it my class, just like that, my C. Okay, now normally that would be all you do. Without the pointer, this would be it. But we're putting it on dynamic memory, so we need a pointer, and we need to tell it. It is a new my class. Simple as that. So now we have a pointer to an area of memory holding a class, holding an instance of our class, just like that. Okay, now we need to take an integer. So let's create a pointer to int. We'll call it my int which is taken so we'll just throw a even though it's privatized then it won't clash for clarity and study if you decide to type this out and print it we'll do it like this um, and it's going to be on the dynamic memory so of type new int so now we have two pointers to two areas of memory set aside by our program at runtime and not compile time now let's take our integer and just put a value in memory at that location. We'll put, for sake of argument, we'll just put an easy number, 99, hit that number twice. Um, now let's set that, let's put that into our program, into our class, that number. Let's punch it in. So normally you would put a dot um, after your class name to access functions and things like that, but that is not how you do it when you're working with dynamic memory. You want to tell it you're doing it as a pointer, but you do not use star because it it screws with shit. It really does. The pointer declaration for functions in a class is a line and the angled mark like that. See, let's move it so you can see what I'm doing. It's a minus and the greater than, just like that. Now, as you can see, when I do it that way, when it's in a dynamic memory, is now we get our class names. Okay, so now what we want to do is set it. So set int, select it, 
right bracket and we want to put the variable that we have at the memory location so type in your pointer name and it will send along our pointer take our pointer up here if you look up here it takes the pointer and then sets whatever's at that pointer location into the memory in my int this cannot be a pointer um, just because it doesn't allow you it when you're declaring class it has to be compile time anyhow let's move on so uh... we're gonna need to output it so let's uh... include the io stream library okay now down here we want to print it so let's uh... using std count and the end line function um, I, there's other ways to do that. I'm not going to go over that. This is more of an advanced topic, and you should know the various ways of handling the using and the namespaces and things like that. If not, view one of my other tutorials. I'm going to put a few more up. I'm going to create an entire library of C++ tutorials. Um, by the time I'm done, I hope I have thousands. So you might want to keep an eye on what I'm doing. I'm going to try to do one a day, maybe every two days. It's part of my own learning experience, and um, I'm quite advanced. So keep that in mind. You're not getting someone's new opinion, things like that. Anyway, let's continue. So now that that's done, we can output. Now, if, if you remember, we have a function to just return it to return the value so we can just use the class interface for that we could technically create a variable on the dynamic memory and then put that value into the dynamic memory but I've demonstrated quite enough right here I don't want to overdo it let's just keep it easy uh, so you can actually learn something now we want to get the integer like that and end the line uh, basically a hard return um, now, when you use dynamic memory, it is very important that you release it. When you clamp something, you have to release it. It is a very key component. Um, this, The way we're doing this right now is you wouldn't need to do this. You can create compile time variables and compile time and compile time up here, and it would work perfectly fine. But when you're using arrays, when you do a compile time array, it has to be a fixed size. Simple as that. There's no way around that. Except for one, and that's to use the new keyword with dynamic memory. And the pointer to dynamic memory will always be the first cell of that memory block. So if you're creating an integer of size 10, and it's on the dynamic memory, the pointer you created for that will be the first block. And this is where... Um, pointer arithmetic becomes a little important. Pointer arithmetic is is pretty easy. I can explain it in the gist of it right now and for those of you with enough intelligence are going to figure out how pointer arithmetic really works. The only real knowledge you would need for pointer arithmetic is to realize that it's based on the size of things and you need to know those sizes. An integer on your average system, a good 99% of the systems that you will probably program on as an average user, is 4 bytes in length. So basically if you take an array of type int of 10 and you arithmetic that and you put arithmetic on that pointer plus 1, you're not adding plus 1, you're adding plus 4. All right. Now you don't want to put plus 4 because it's going to jump 4 cells. You're going to do plus 1 and it'll add plus 4 because the compiler and the computer know that a byte it's four bytes in length for a type int so when you're adding plus one int it's four bytes all right uh, that we'll leave that for another day so what we need to do is release the memory that we have used we use that delete keyword you want to delete see that the class no longer exists the memory's been freed it can be claimed by anything else we can also delete my integer just like that gone we no longer have access to that uh, the memory has been freed everything in RAM is gone we, we're done with the output things like that now let's give it a quick run